Hey Facebook friends and YouTube, I want to make a video now about character. And this is really, really important <clears throat> that we look into this because I think the concept of character is not um, held up to a high importance in my generation and it's very sad and people should care a lot more about their character. Um, you know, it's not relative, right and wrong is not relative, there is an absolute right and wrong and so we just really need to care about that and we need to have a fear of the Lord and if we do have that fear of the Lord we will care about our character and that's but that's really what's missing is that people don't fear God you know and that's why they don't care about what their character is like but you know even apart from religion like you, people should have a good character because you're not going to succeed in life if you don't have a good character, like eventually karma is going to happen. You're going to reap what you sow. Whatever you did is going to come back to bite you in some way. In some way, God will punish you for doing the wrong thing. And I think people get really up on their high horse and prideful because they think like, oh, God's not going to punish me for this, this and that. But it's like, well, just wait. <laughs> like maybe he's not yet, but it will punishment will come. You know, um, like there's a story in the Bible where Jesus said to this guy, you know, he said, go and sin no more, lest something worse might happen to you. So, and this guy was like paralyzed. So it's not always the case that when we have an illness or a disease, it's because of sin, but sometimes it is. And so that right there should put a little bit of fear of the Lord into us and make us realize that what we do matters and that God can punish us for different things you know I mean even like in my own life like if I ever get the flu or a cold I'm like did I do something <laughs> you know I mean it really should make us all self-evaluate what did I do this week what did I do this month what did I do this year is there anything I did that made God mad I've been really lucky I haven't had a cold in like it's been a really long time since I was 25 it's been nine years <laughs> So that's something to brag about, but I haven't had perfect health. But I literally have not had a cold, like, with a cough for nine years. So I think that's been, like, divine health. You know, God just sustaining me because I've been trying to live uprightly for nine years. And, well, trying to anyways. <laughs> Nobody's perfect, but anyways. I mean, I did have gallbladder issues, but I think that was caused by my second pregnancy. So... Anyways, so it's really important that you have good character because what you reap, you will sow, and, you know, it's not all relative, you know, like, my generation, we were all taught evolution, and it all started with that, you know, because when people believe in that, they're like, well, there's no creator, we just came from some primordial soup, so what we do doesn't matter, that's what my generation started to think, and that's why there's such an epi epidemic now of homosexuality and not just that but like drugs and drinking I mean my generation was like the bar hoppers for sure I did like a tiny bit of bar hopping but anyways so you know it all started with evolution people are like well if we don't have a creator then there's nobody to answer to so it doesn't matter what I do I can just do whatever there's no standard of right and wrong you know and so my generation just kind of went off the deep end totally lost respect for authority, which I think that was caused because of the moms not being at home, which is why my goal was always to become a teacher, which I'm planning to, so that I can be home when my girls are out of school. But anyway, so my generation was neglected by the moms and the dads, well, I mean, really it was that, you know, the dads didn't step up and work as much as they should have, so then the women had to work. And then the kids not, got neglected, and then they grew up without discipline and authority. And then they had these lies being taught to them <clears throat> in school, unfortunately, just a little bit. For my generation, it was just a little bit. It was just evolution. But that plants a seed that grows into a lot of stuff. Because if people believe that, then they don't believe in right or wrong, and they think they can just do whatever they want. And there was a really interesting interview with uh, Bob Larson, who I guess was a professional exorcist, and he did do a pretty good job. And he was interviewing Anton LaVey's daughter and this other guy who are in charge of the Church of Satan. And they were talking about what she was saying was actually very interesting. And I was like, that's it. That's how my generation thinks. But she was saying, you know, there is no 
ultimate evil. Like nothing is evil. It's all relative. And, <clears throat> and then he was like, well, if someone murdered someone you cared about, you know, wouldn't that be wrong? You know, I think he asked her something like that. And I, I think it stumped her, but yeah, it's like, if it affects you, of course you're going to say it's wrong. But if it doesn't affect you, then it's like, meh, then it's not wrong. You know, I mean, that's what people think. So, <clears throat> anyways, there's definitely a lacking of the fear of the Lord in my generation and in America today. And people don't think that God will punish them for what they do, but he can. So we just need to really remember that and watch out for that. And we need to really focus on having a good character, not sinning, you know, and I think there's a cop out now that people are like, well, nobody can be perfect. And it's like, well, duh, of course nobody can be perfect, but we can try. We can get as close to trying to be perfect as we can. I mean, at least we should try. And then there's a cop out of, well, we don't want to be self-righteous like the Pharisees. And, you know, if we try and be perfect, we're going to be all prideful. And it's like, well, no, then you'll just have confidence, right? There's a difference between confidence and pride. Like, I consider myself a pretty confident person, but that's because I don't do stuff that would make me lack confidence, like before God, you know? I keep a clear conscience with God, you know? Everything that I do, I feel like God approves of, for the most part. I mean, I'm not perfect, but... Anyways, for the most part, I think I'm... You know, I do the right thing, so... You know, if you do the right thing, you will have confidence and you won't be insecure and you won't have fear and anxiety or depression. And that really is the answer to the epidemic in our culture now of anxiety and depression. Why? It's because of sin, of course. I mean, if you sin, there was this really good book called Crime and Punishment that we read in high school and it really resonated with me and I was like, wow, yeah, that's how it is. I forget the whole story, but this guy killed this woman and it was like eating at him. And then you have the whole like criminal psychology thing in the book. And the guy was like, just thinking about it all the time. And he thought that everybody thought, knew what he did, even though nobody did. But it's like, I don't know. Anyways, eventually he turned himself in, but it caused him a lot of anxiety. So anyways, that makes me think, you know, for sure, like when people have a lot of anxiety, it's because of like some sin, you know? <clears throat> so yeah, so that there's another good reason to have good character, be a law-abiding citizen, and not do anything that is going to make you have anxiety, you know, and the depression, I think, is when we stay angry at ourselves, it can be anger at ourselves that we just, like, hang on to, and we just, like, won't forgive ourselves, or it's um, bitterness, resentment, and anger at another person, which is a sin, because the Bible says if you do not forgive, then God will not forgive you. So we need to be careful of that, but that leads to depression because then we're stuck in the past and we won't let ourselves be happy because we're constantly thinking about and angry at someone and that causes depression. But really the depression is that we know that we're doing the wrong thing by holding on to this bitterness, you know. So I hope that that helps some of you and if you struggle with anxiety or depression, just think about is there some sin that I have? Is there something that I'm thinking about? Something that I'm bitter about and not forgiving someone? You know, like I've never really struggled with depression, but I think that's why because I do, I am pretty quick to forgive. Like my dad sexually abused me when I was a kid, but I think I forgave him. Like my mom always says, you didn't really forgive him, but I think I did. I think I forgave him a long time ago. And if I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have been able to move on with my life, but I did, you know? And I, I was a straight A student in high school. I mean, maybe emotionally it affected me in college because I was kind of like a non-talker in class and I did have some insecurities. But <clears throat> the affecting there was that I felt less than, you know, it wasn't that I didn't forgive him, it was that I, I mean, more, when I was abused, I took it on myself. Like I had a hard time forgiving myself which I think that is across the board. I think like almost 100% of the population has been sexually abused and they blame themselves and they get mad at themselves. And, you know, but you have to just let yourself go. You have to forgive the little you. I went to counseling and she had me bring in pictures of the little me and I was like crying. And I realized I really did have a lot of anger at the little me, you know, the little Lisa, because it's like, I thought I should have stopped it. 
But then you're not thinking about it logically because it's like you were just a little kid. How could you stop something like that? You know, I mean, Satan takes away our logic, but God gives it to us. Praise God. So if you were abused, think about it logically. You were a little kid. You couldn't do anything about it, you know, and you just need, you need to set yourself free and forgive yourself and just realize logically, I was a little kid. I didn't know better. I couldn't run away. There was nowhere else that I could have lived. You know, usually these situations were unavoidable. In my case, it was my dad. Like, what was I going to do? You know, I mean, and when I was old enough to understand, I did do something. My dad was attempting something and I jumped out of the bed and I told my mom and he went to jail. Praise God. You know, but you know, I mean, not everybody has that much strength when they're a little kid, you know, I mean, who can expect that much from a six-year-old, but anyways, just forgive yourself, let yourself go, then you won't have anxiety or depression. God loves you all.